Hello, test, test. There we go. What do you know? I'm the only guy here. <clears throat> okay. Let's turn off. Resume recording. There we go. So that I can record these wonderful lectures that I do and then put them up on um, YouTube so that people who can't make the morning class can still find them on YouTube and look at them and be able to fast forward through all the boring parts. Not that there's ever gonna be any boring parts. So I'm back to screen sharing again now. Okay, so um, <clears throat> there will be some reading assignments, um, mostly this quarter. Um, if you haven't taken the class before, I'm gonna ask you to kind of read chapters one through six on your own, but chapter seven is color theory, and we're just going to sit in chapter seven all quarter long and just play around with color theory. So um, uh, it's not difficult reading, and it's something to do on the weekends in Coos Bay when there's nothing else to do in Coos Bay, I'm told. So anyway, there's all of that. We're going to do about eight design projects, and I say major design projects here, but it's just going to be eight design projects that usually take one to two weeks to do. And, you know, they're mostly fun exercises um, to, to kind of start playing around with uh, color theory and color relationships and then composing with color shapes in a composition. We're going to learn a little bit about painting. We're going to learn a little bit about um, doing things that are both abstract as well as creating an actual image that, like, is logical and makes sense when you look at it. Uh, so don't panic. There's going to be a little bit of art embedded in this design class. I do like to critique these things in a group critique setting. And so we actually on Fridays usually want to just have our projects. Have, you guys have your project where you have taken a, a cell phone photo of it so that you've got a, a photograph of your project, digital photograph that is um, open on your desktop as a document so that we can all go around then and we can all screen share and you can share up your project for everybody to look at and then we will say nice things about your project and we will try to minimize you know the nasty comments and that kind of stuff. A group critique is a really important way that we assess and evaluate uh, the performance of the work that we do in the visual arts and so um, there's that. Um, I will have a midterm and a final quiz. Exams is such a scary word. And my midterm and final quizzes are really 20 questions, multiple choice. And they deal with um, the, uh, uh, the concepts that are under discussion in the, in the book, in the chapters. And so this quarter, we're really only going to be dealing with chapter seven and a bit of chapter eight. I got to tell you that I'm going to throw a little bit of chapter eight in there because we're going to play around a little bit with um, a linear perspective. And um, it seems like there's another spatial. Oh, yeah. We're talking about the spatial um, characteristics of color. And so how color creates space, how color creates three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional surface are part of the things that we want to talk about. So we have to get into the spatial ideas of color. So we'll get into that in chapter eight, just a little bit. Okay. And actually, let's see. I usually do a portfolio in the class, but this year, since you guys are um, all photographing each little project and uploading it into coursework, that's, gonna t that's going to suffice for our portfolio because then I will have this collection of photographs of all of your pieces. So we'll be good to go. I do want to tell anybody who is a, going to be a designer or an artist, a uh, design major or an art major, that it's really good to um, document all of your work and to keep an electronic portfolio that has all of your projects in it from college, um, all of the you know really cool artwork you do on the side, whether you are doing the stuff as a freelancer or whatever, you know, you need to have a digital portfolio, a place where all of your work goes. And so a lot of people just use their phone. In this day and age, everybody has a phone and a lot of artists and designers keep their top, you know, 20 projects right on their phone. So they have a go-to place where they can show clients, you know, 
even in an elevator pitch, the kind of work they do and what they're interested in. And so um, that that's works as a portfolio too. Okay, I'm gonna um, go to the supplies list because that's really what we need to cover today. And then we may just have to call it a day after this. Well, I'll, what I'll do is then answer questions and open it up to a little bit, little bit, a little bit of lively discussion with you guys. So we talked about the textbook, and if you can see my little thumbnail, I'm still holding up the textbook. Yay, the textbook! Okay, Bristol board is the next thing on the supply list, and Bristol board comes in a gummed tab that is uh, 20 pages because this stuff is relatively thick. These are thick um, things that are about the weight of t-shirt uh, cardboard and it's, it's bright white and you know it's bright white and it's 11 by 14 and this is the thing that I really like to build design projects on because it's, it's thick and durable and something that you can glue stuff to, you can erase and draw on it and it won't disintegrate. It doesn't get destroyed in your backpack when you're running around and that kind of stuff. So Bristol board is, is what we use. Alternatively, if you are going across the street to Walmart because we're out of Bristol board at the bookstore, um, watercolor board <coughs> by the same company. Um, this is Strathmore Paper Company. Um, <coughs> watercolor board is also available. And this is a paper product. This is, again, um, 20 sheets. They're very heavy sheets. They're about the same weight as the Bristol board. And so you can substitute the watercolor uh, for the Bristol if you can't find Bristol. Bristol is also, I think, available at um, Staples right next to Walmart and, of course, at our bookstore. So that's what we're going to be doing most of our projects on is the Bristol board or watercolor. <coughs> Here's the crazy part. I want you guys to look at, to try to find a thick, like over 200 pages, glossy fashion magazine. And my favorite fashion magazine, the one I'm holding up right now is a Vogue fashion magazine. Um, Vogue is really cool with the um, academic calendar because usually they either come out with their spring uh, collections or their fall collections that coincide with either the beginning of fall quarter or in this case, winter quarter, because the, the spring collections really start coming out in January or February. And so, and I like Vogue the best because it has the best, um, it has the best photography and the highest quality um, printing on, again, glossy or semi-glossy pages. And so this is really good. This is good for two reasons. I like to have us looking at the Vogue, um, fashion magazine so that we can see what what um, all the professionals at the highest end of their um, uh, profession are doing in terms of photography, um, fashion design, um, layout, um, art design, um, advertising, all of the stuff that you would do as a graphic designer or an applied designer of some kind uh, is in here. So if you're interested in fashion or any of that other stuff, that's great. If you are a feminist and you hate fashion magazines because they exploit women and they're all about um, the objectification of beauty and women and all of that stuff, you're in luck because we're going to destroy this fashion magazine over the course of this quarter. We're going to use it as source material for our projects. We're going to cut it up. We're going to rip it up. We're going to uh, <clears throat> really destroy this fashion magazine. So whether you love fashion or hate fashion, um, the, you're going to want to get one of these fashion magazines. I was at the store last night and there was no Vogue magazines on the racks yet. I don't think that the next issue has come out yet. So don't worry if it's going to take two or three weeks to get this thing, but it's on my list of things to get. Okay. Um, okay. For, for winter quarter, I have something that's really special. Um, since we are all working remotely, I cannot uh, provide you guys with acrylic paint anymore. So um, in a design class that deals with color, we have to deal with paint. And so I'd really like you guys to try to get a small set of acrylic paints. Now I was looking at, you know, small 
um, sets of paints over at Walmart last night. And I found this, which I thought was even better. This is about uh, 10 bottles of acrylic paint in little one or two ounce bottles. And so that's really good. This gives me a wide range of colors, including black and white, but all of the major colors um, that we're gonna be using. There's six colors on the color wheel that we wanna use. I think they've got black and white and brown in here and probably something that they call flesh tone. God help me. You know, it's one of those Caucasian things. Anyway, so um, I want you to get some kind of an acrylic paint set. Now, we've got to make sure that it's acrylic because a lot of these paint sets, sets also are for um, K through 12 stuff or 4-H, and some of them say tempera or watercolor or face paint. We do not want tempera paint or watercolor paint or face paint. We want acrylic paint. So make sure that the package says acrylic on it. They come packaged in a variety of different ways. This one has the 10 bottles in it. Um, others, you know, come packaged maybe with some paint brushes too. This one looked like enough paint to get us going for the whole quarter. And this was $10. So it's not too much. It's not too little. It's just about right. I'm always about the Goldilocks principle. You know, not too expensive, not too cheap, just right. Not too much, not too little, just right. Okay, so that was the small acrylic paint set with at least yellow, red, blue, green, violet, orange, because those are the six colors on the color wheel that we're going to use. I'm going to want you to get a paintbrush, <clears throat> like a number eight or number six paintbrush, and that may, means nothing to any of us. But again, over at Walmart, they have these like super cheap paintbrush sets. There's like four or five paintbrushes in this little set for three bucks. And this is really cool. So I don't know if you guys can see this. These happen to be the flat paint brushes. And you can get either flat or round paint brushes in a variety of sizes. But you're going to need at least one of the middle sizes paintbrush for the projects that we're going to do. So there's that. Um, I'm recording this now so that you can check this later on if you wanted to be able to, to uh, write that down. Otherwise, it's on, you know, it's on our supplies list. Um, for design, we always want you guys to have a steel ruler of some kind. This is a stainless steel ruler. Um, they're also available at Walmart in um, uh, an aluminum version, but a metal ruler is really nice for being able to draw straight lines, of course, but also to have a straight edge to run a knife along to make straight cuts for different kinds of paper projects and design and stuff like that. So metal ruler is a big deal. Black rollerball pen. I really love rollerball pens. Um, black is really important. I've played with a lot of them. Um, there are medium fine points and ultra fine points. And I like the, I like the one that's in the middle. So if it says that it's a, you know, if you're looking at one brand of, of rollerball pens, um, try to get the one that is sized in the middle. These, this is actually a uniball pen. And this is a 0.7 millimeter line that this one makes. It's a really nice thing. You can use this for note taking for all of your classes, but this makes a sexy, beautiful, flowing line that's really gorgeous for art projects and design projects. So that's why I really like the black rollerball pen with about a 0.7 millimeter um, line that it makes. We're also going to want a glue stick of some kind. You know, if I put this right in front of my black t-shirt, it works the best. Glue sticks are great. It's what we throw our projects together with when we're um, collaging paper projects and paper shapes together. So a glue stick of some kind would be great. <clears throat> a, an exacto knife. I'm holding this very carefully, very gingerly, because these things are freaking sharp and you will cut yourself. Hopefully, X-Acto knives are now sold with a plastic guard that goes over the top that you can pop off, use the X-Acto knife for cutting stuff, and then replace the plastic tip. Ask me how I know how these are sharp, because I jammed my hand 
into one of these once and then I had a really bloody mess. So be very careful with an X-Acto knife. But we do use these in design classes, so you want to have an X-Acto knife. And most of you who were in the class last quarter got an X-Acto knife and that was really good. And also, although I have fought this forever, you know, you can use scissors too in this class. Scissors don't necessarily teach really good eye-hand coordination as an artistic uh, set of basic uh, um, skills, but a lot of people, if they can't run a, an X-Acto knife, they feel much more comfortable with a scissors. And so you can use a scissors if you have one, I don't want you to run out and buy one because these things, you know, are seven to $10 and that's expensive, but scissors are also possible. Okay, so <clears throat> I just wanted to run through the rest of this. It, it shows the number of, of um, points that are available in the quarter are like 200 points. And, um, you know, I, I have, I, I grade on a straight curve. So if you can achieve 90%, you know, of all the points in the quarter that are available, you know, that's an A, 90% or better. 80% um, to 90% is a, is a B and so forth. So it's kind of grading on a straight curve. We only have whole grades at this school. So we don't have pluses and minuses. So you're either gonna get an A, B, C, D, or F for a grade. You can withdraw from this class. If you get into trouble, um, academically, socially, whatever, um, and you get overwhelmed, you may withdraw from this class and then you won't get an F at the end of the quarter. Um, be careful, um, those of you who are veterans and getting veterans benefits, you really need to get a grade in the class and not just withdraw from the class. So you kind of have to watch what your um, uh, financial aid status is. But for those of you who are trying to preserve your um, GPA, your grade point average, uh, and if you've taken too many classes or you get too far behind or whatever, you may withdraw from classes all the way up till the um, middle of the 10th week of the quarter. The Wednesday of the 10th week of the quarter is the last day to withdraw from a class. And after, if you don't make it by then, then you are at, um, uh, going to get the grade that you got in the class, that you earned in the class. Uh, College students are responsible for your own enrollment, so you can, you know, withdraw yourself from a class going through the student first stop uh, to be able to withdraw from a class. So I just want to let you know about that. I like attendance. It's kind of important. So uh, please try to be here every day, and that's great. Um, we have a disability accommodation statement. Um, we have disability services in Stensland Hall. Here's the phone number for that. And so if you need help with, um, um, with anything disability related, you, know, you can contact them and they can help us out. Um, for online courses, uh, let me know about the technical problems. Um, I'd really like it if you guys could turn on your, your camera uh, and turn on your microphone when it's time to speak because that would be great. I understand that sometimes bandwidth issues are such that if you don't have your camera on, you get a clearer signal. And so I'm not gonna be a stickler for having your camera on, but I wanna encourage you guys to have your camera on as much as possible. Um, the next page is actually the entire calendar for this quarter with all of the projects on it and their due dates and everything worked out all the way until, um, hey, March 17th, it's St. Patrick's Day. That's the day that our final exam is gonna be on and that's the day that the quarter ends. So this quarter goes um, January, February, March, and then we're out of it for the quarter. And the last page of the syllabus is all the other crap that they make us put on here, which is the fine print. And again, um, there's, there's notice of non-discrimination and people to be able to contact if you feel like you're being discriminated against in the class, either by other students or by the teacher, so that you know that you have um, you know, places to go to, and to turn to for assistance for stuff like that. Um, Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing this and come back to you. I've come back to you, hooray. That was the death by syllabus. Um, I'm gonna open it up to you guys. 
if you want to ask me questions or make comments or voice your frustration, I'm going to take a breath and stop talking. And so if anybody has a question, please feel free. Um, we are both professional when we need to be professional in this class, and we're also very informal when we need to be informal in this class. And I know that on the first day of class, it's always scary to um, talk in front of other people or talk, you know, to the teacher or ask a question. But I want to give you the chance. Don't say I ever never gave you the chance to ask a question about this class. And then if you feel like you're in the wrong class, you can always, you know, drop out of this class and, and sign up for something else. But my classes are full. And I think my classes are full because um, I'm personable and I figured out how to do this internet thing and all of that. So there's, there's all of that. So I do not see microphones becoming unmuted. So not seeing that, I'm just going to demonstrate some of the other features that I have figured out for teaching you guys on the class. Oh, James, what's up? Yeah, I just unmuted my microphone, thought I'd throw myself out there. <laughs> Howdy. Welcome to the class. Thank you for being here. Um, are you an art or design major by any chance? I'm not. That's okay. That's all right. Um, but I'm interested, in, I'm interested in art and design, especially online graphics. Good. Okay. Did you take any art and design in high school at all? Um, I took art in high school, but um, that's been some time ago. And you know, I did really well in art, but I don't. I don't find myself to be very artistic as far as like, you know, like creating really quality drawings or paintings or nothing. I've never. I'm a little insecure as far as my art capacity. <laughs> okay. Well. I want to tell you something. In the world of art and design, there's all kinds of approaches to it. There's all kinds of tools that we use. And so some of us feel like we're super gifted as people who can draw and render things with just, you know, pencil and paper. And that's that's one set of skills, but it's not all of creativity. So we're going to play around with the tools in graphic design. And you may find that you're very gifted as a graphic designer, and that's completely separate, a separate issue from being a painter or a drawer or a sculptor. So bear with us. I think you'll you'll have a lot of fun with this class. Um, so I just want to show you some of the things that I've figured out, and some of you have seen this before, and so it's going to be second. You know, it's going to be old hat to you, but anyway, I've I've changed uh, camera angles, and now I've got my this is my <clears throat> desktop, and so I've got a bird's eye view of my desktop, so that when I want to demonstrate something, I can be working on my workspace and on my desktop, so that you can see what I'm working at, working on, and so that's another way of me presenting other than just <clears throat> the talking head. <clears throat> I even have a third camera that I can use if I have to get up and go someplace or set up another kind of a demonstration that needs a longer shot or something that's not just the, the talking head. And I can flip back and forth between these cameras. Each webcam has a microphone on it, so we've always got uh, good sound coverage. I'm even using... Um, some photographic lights here to try to light myself as well as my backgrounds and my workspace to give you guys uh, a pretty good idea of how to do this. I took it upon myself to try to create something that was a poor man's um, television um, studio so that I could uh, try to do the kinds of things that some of my favorite um, uh, YouTube uh, content providers do except that I do not have a whole uh, slew of people working with me on editing and camera and sound and all of that kind of stuff. So as a one man, uh, you know, teaching phenomenon here, you're going to get the best that I can give you, but it's, it's going to be kind of rough around the edges because it's a classroom kind of a situation instead of um, a fully produced um, video kind of a thing. So I don't do a lot of video editing and that kind of stuff. 
Um, that was 45 minutes of you guys getting just dragged through me doing a monologue. So I think we're going to call it a day. I want you guys to try to go in um, to my Laker link, go into the um, e-learning shell for this class, and you'll only see two things right there, the main page and the syllabus. And so you'll be able to download or print out the syllabus if you want to. And as I you know, bring more of my content in, I'm going to be posting it and creating coursework assignments and coursework for us to do and that kind of thing. And so next time there will be an assignment or two in coursework, I'm also going to try to do, you know, a, cu um, a couple of presentations over the next couple of days uh, to get us up to speed with our first project and our first project area. So any other questions for the good of the order before we quit for the day? You are so patient and kind. And I appreciate that. Okay, well, that's all for now. I'm going to sign off and I will see you. Oh, yes, there's a question. Gabrielle has a question. So please. Um, are you doing the meetings every day or just Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays? Um, this class only is supposed to meet Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So those are the, okay. those are the class meeting days that I will be live doing Zoom. It's just Mondays. Wednesdays and Fridays. Good, good question. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So hopefully by Wednesday, the other seven people in this class will be able to find us and join us. Um, and so I'll be taking the recording of this, making a YouTube version of it and posting it there, and then posting links uh, in our uh, e-learning platform so that people can find these old lectures and get whatever they missed. So that'll be something that will be another resource available for you guys, as well as the people who, who missed today. So goodbye for now. Thank you very much for coming. And I will see you again on Wednesday morning at nine o'clock. So long.